Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. I am Kimberly D'Souza. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for staying with us. Of course, happy International Women's Day to you, wherever you are. Now, of course, the theme for this year's International Women's Day is gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. And of course, from that came the campaign of breaking the bias. And so we're not only talking about breaking the bias in terms of relationships, but we're also looking at stigma and discrimination as it relates to same-sex relationships. And so joining me to discuss that very topic, we have a Dr. Um, Angelique Nixon, right, who's going to be talking to me about, you know, just breaking that stigma and, you know, how we can deal with gender equality even in uh, same-sex relationships. So, Dr. Nixon, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, and happy International Women's Day to you. Yes, happy International Women's Day. Thank you so much. Now, Dr. Nixon, you are a Bahamas-born Trinidad and Tobago a writer, artist, and scholar activist. And you're also a lecturer of graduate studies at the University of the West Indies, of course, discussing gender bias. So I know you're the perfect person um, to talk about on this topic. So let's jump right in. What is gender bias? Dr. Nixon, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can hear you. Hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, gender bias is discrimination on the basis of gender, quite simply. And it affects all women, and this includes trans women. It includes people who are gender nonconforming. And the important thing about understanding gender bias is that it can be implicit, it can be explicit, and it can also be built into, you know, into structures. It can be built into the workplace. It can be built into our families, and it is. And sometimes it can be quite invisible. And so it actually impacts all of us, but it disproportionately affects women and it disproportionately affects people who are not part of the gender and sexual norm. Right. Now you're saying that it affects women and girls in general, and we understand that, but particularly women who love women or those same sex relationships, how will it affect them? Well, the stigma and discrimination that people who are not straight experience, uh, you know, every day in our everyday lives. You know, we're taught very young from young girls and young boys and young people. We're taught and socialized into our gender very, very early. And gender roles are not necessarily seen as equal or valued. So it's built into the very family structure. And the assumption is, and the norm is being heterosexual or straight. So if you are not straight, if you're same-sex loving, uh, if you are bisexual, queer, in terms of your sexual or gender identity, then you are outside of the norm. So the stigma and discrimination can start quite early because you are not operating within uh, the bounds of what society, communities, and our family consider to be average or norm. And so stigma happens consistently it can affect how people affect themselves understand themselves and it can affect how we are in our relationships the kinds of relationships that we pursue because being straight is the norm if you are not straight you go through a period especially as young people we go through a period of dealing with uh the the, the challenges understanding you know who you are and then when entering a relationship all of those things can impact you and as a woman who loves women, as a queer woman, uh, as a, a trans woman, you're experiencing the levels of what women already experience, right? So sexism, uh, the impacts of how women are already seen in society. Plus, if you're in a relationship with another woman, then it's a double and sometimes triple experience of discrimination, of marginalization. Dr. Nixon, do you have any or any particular examples of, of, you know, how exactly, you know, this will affect women? Is it that they might get depressed? Is it that they might have, you know, um, de detrimental thoughts? I mean, how will this play out then in any relationship? Well, if it's affecting you, I mean, it's, you know, the ways that uh, not being accepted in your family. So I'll just give specific examples like that. So I am a queer woman and my family does not accept me. So uh, right away I'm experiencing perhaps rejection from my family that can affect my everyday life. Uh, I go into the workplace and someone finds out that I'm queer, that I'm same-sex loving, that I'm gay, and I experience discrimination in the workplace. People are talking about me or I could even get fired from my job. There is currently no protection 
for anyone on the basis of sexual orientation in the workplace. I could be denied health care. I could go to the hospital and someone could say, oh, this woman is gay or queer or trans. I don't want to work with her. I don't want to do, I, I don't want to take care of her. And that's what happens all the time. And it particularly impacts uh, women. It particularly impacts trans women. And it impacts folks who might not be able to get access to a private doctor or be in a workplace where they have more status or uh, protection because of who they are, right? So we know that there are intersections here that impact uh, women around class uh, and around sexuality and also where you live and how you get from place to place. So, you know, I'm also thinking about uh, when you are dealing with public transportation as a woman, uh, just being, you know, in different spaces and, you know, people looking at you, how you express your gender, who you are if you're alone, and uh, the, the everyday experiences that women have in public, if you are queer or if you're a trans woman, it is doubly and triply so. Right. Now, I mean, you, you brought a lot of um, issues to the fore, right, in terms of how you are received in the workplace, even as uh, to how you are received in your family and, and um, among your family members. I mean, how can we as a society kind of confront these issues and maybe, you know, kind of want to attain a greater sense of gender equality across the spectrum? Well, I think it takes all of us as a society in our communities and our families. We have to confront it. We have people in our lives who are queer, who are same-sex loving, uh, women loving women. How do we create transformation in our families, in our workplaces? Not everyone can be visible. Not everyone can say who they are because uh, of the, the ways that stigma and discrimination impact us. So uh, there are ways that we continue to talk about it and in our work for me in my research and in my activism with Kaiso Sex and Gender Justice and doing different kinds of projects, uh, we want to make sure that people understand how sexism and homophobia uh, impact everything, our daily lives. And so that's one of the things that we want to confront together. And that is going to create uh, transformation and changes in our societies. We want uh, we want all of us to live and love freely. We want to live with dignity. We want to be respected. And so a part of the work is affirming our rights, uh, doing the work of organizing uh, to you know, really bring awareness to these issues. And so for me, I do that in my research and in my activism and speaking out. And I think for everyone, uh, it's just important that we respect each other and we accept our differences. And I think that is the basis for transformation and change. And then secondly, I think it's really important that we do the work of within our education systems. We really need comprehensive sex education so young people can learn about their bodies. Uh, young people can be more empowered around themselves and understand who they are. And this means uh, you know, really preventing issues of child sexual abuse. It means preventing gender-based violence. Studies show that comprehensive sex education comprehensive sexuality education actually improves the lives of young people and creates greater transformation in society. And so that's one significant way that many organizations, women's organizations and LGBTQI organizations have been calling for. The research shows it and we continue in our advocacy and activism to call for specific changes as well as protection. The government uh, should protect people on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. That's a part of breaking the bias. It's a part of the work that we must demand that the government protect rights and freedoms for all people so that we can live in a just and equitable society. Now, Dr. Nixon, I know we've only scratched the surface of this conversation, and of course we can go deeper, but with the few seconds we have remaining, any final thoughts, anything else you want to add before we wrap? I just want to say on International Women's Day, let's celebrate and love all women and do our work in breaking the bias, confronting uh, issues of gender inequality. Let's name it, let's call it, and let's also work uh, together to fight against forms of discrimination and forms of gender-based violence, which impact all of us. Thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show, Dr. Nixon. And I think I may actually have to uh, 
probably have a separate interview with you because this was a very, very interesting topic. And I know that a lot of people within the community would have appreciated the words. And I hope that others who are allies also really understand what you're saying and use the information to transform, you know, what we think about the LGBTQI community. So thank you so much for joining us this morning on Now. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <laughs> Guys, and we are continuing the conversation. Of course, today is International Women's Day. And again, if you're looking on, if you're an ally, happy International Women's Day to you. Of course, you know, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Stay tuned on the Now Morning Show.